What's up everybody, it's Ashley Keaton with Just Ashley Keaton and you're here again. We're going to check out tongues, right? Very controversial topic um, coming from the Apostolic Pentecostal sitting right here. Let's get into it. First of all guys, before we get to anything, I want you to go ahead and kill that like button all right and go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell because subscriptions don't really mean a whole lot nowadays share this video comment because obviously this is a very controversial topic to a lot of people so I want you to go ahead and comment um, any questions you may have because I'm obviously not going to get into everything today but I'm gonna try my best to get into everything that I possibly can and my power and my knowledge and everything that I have in my mind that God has bestowed upon me the revelation that he's giving <laughs> this is what I see brought up a lot of times um, to just undercut speaking in tongues altogether. Uh, you go to S 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Everyone can understand that pretty easily. But then the next verse is the one that we got problems with. Because when you get to 16, it says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more. <laughs> Ungodliness. Ungodliness. This is what they say the language, the heavenly language that God has given us is. It's just ungodliness and it's vain babblings that will not edify anyone, right? And I can understand why you would go there, but please don't, okay? Because I'm going to give you the revelation real quick before we cast each other out into the pit. To the fire that no man can quench, no man can thirst. First of all, let me stop y'all with this Star Labs sweater I got on. If y'all ain't got one, then you ain't even living life to the fullest. Sorry, uh, all you Marvel supporters. I'm definitely Team Marvel, but I'm sorry if anything on DC is touching this skin, it's going to be this Star Labs hoodie, bruh. I was at Star Labs. That's how I feel when I put this on. Everybody that's Team Flash, I want to say y'all, I want to see y'all say, uh, we going very fast. Put that in the comments. Very fast, all right? Put that in the comments. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Put it in the comments, all right? Um, Because I'm Team Flash all day. You know what I mean? I'm just going to be real with you. First Corinthians. Why to hold up a two? First Corinthians chapter. I was about to do 14 with my hand, but I don't know how to do that. First Corinthians chapter 14. Okay. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. I love the first verse. First of all, we have to understand this first verse before we go anywhere, okay? Verse one says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. People think that. Um, desiring spiritual gifts is an either or. I want you to follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. He's not saying instead of. He's saying, I would rather you move on to prophecy, right? He just set up the whole chapter in this first verse and everybody missed it. Verse 2, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. No man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Okay, let's just go right down to the bottom of this, just so we can get some clear clarification. First verse we just read, 2 Timothy 2.16. Uh, but shun profane and vain babblings, for this will increase unto more ungodliness. This is the verse they used to tell us. Uh, the tongues that you're speaking, the repetition, it's, it's ungodly, okay? Before I go into all the... Is it necessary for salvation? I'm not going to cover that today. So if that's what you're looking for, you may not get it in this video, but you will get some nuggets that you can use when people try to tell you that speaking in tongues is demonic or something that you should not do unless you have an interpreter, right? I'm going to kill all that today because we got to have some understanding here. Um, I didn't study all this for nothing. Okay. <clears throat> First uh, Corinthians chapter 14 verse 40 let all things be done decently and in order This is another verse that you say if we speak in tongues without an interpreter We got to be decent guys But this is more of an opinion because the Bible has to say that we have to speak in tongues only with an interpreter Oh, it does say that It says that 
It's in here? Well, let me read it for you and get some explain explanation on it real quick before you try to tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's go to it, Louie. I'm sorry. I just figured whoever told me that they name got to be Louie because Louie the only people to tell me something and I know that they wrong and I done studied this, all right? Same chapter. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 27. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or by the most, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. Because obviously you can't understand things. I mean, it's simple. I can't understand you. you can, we can both be saying the same thing in two different ways. Um, you could say something. Someone else could say something straight to me. I don't understand any of it because I'm like, two people are talking at the same time. It's, it's common sense, people. That's what he's saying. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself. And to, but first of all, most people don't even read the whole verse. Most people just say, uh, and the Bible says, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. I'm like, okay, look, I'm not trying to bash you right now, but you got to finish the verse. You got to finish the verse. He says, and let him speak to himself and to God. He's saying if he don't have an interpreter, he can't use his tongues to edify the church. He can only use his tongues to edify himself and Lord. It is the same word edify that is used for church that is used for yourself. So if I say I'm going to edify the church, then it can't turn around and say when I edify myself, that's a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with edifying yourself. As a matter of fact, when you edify the church, you are edifying yourself. So you can't you, you can't cut that out of that. Let's start from the beginning and read with some context, please. Thank you. Listen, and here we go. Verse 1, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. He wants you to move on to prophecy, not negate charity, which is love, and desiring the spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. He wants you to move to prophecy. Okay, and then the next one. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. How can that be a bad thing? For no man understandeth him, how in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Okay, here we go. I'm, I'm only seeing good things spoken from speaking in tongues to yourself, or speaking in tongues between you and God, which is what it tells you to do if you don't have an interpreter. Keep it between you and God. That's the whole point of it. But verse three, but he that prophesies speaking unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Verse four, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. He didn't say this guy is proud, prideful. He never said that he's boasting himself up. Where y'all, where, where are people getting this word from, this understanding from? Verse 4 just simply says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesieth edifieth the church. It's the same word edifieth. So that means he's boasting the church up. It's the same thing. It's the same word. It doesn't make a difference whether it's the church or you. You are edifying. The word is edifying. Um, and then 5, I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. Exact, you see? This is the same exact setup as the first verse. People think, well, God doesn't want you. He doesn't want, uh, he would rather you prophesy than speak in tongues anyways. No, 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 no. He would rather you speak in tongues moving on to the gifts, desiring the gifts of prophecy. Because prophecy comes, it, it's a love that you show when you edify people. He set it up already. It's just the same thing being spoken again in a different way. I would that ye all spake with tongues. He wants us all to speak in tongues. But rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues. Except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Now I'm going to tell y'all. If you want some clear understanding of this. I'm not going to go into the whole entire thing. It, it just keeps revealing more and more and more and more. Um, the Bible does say that you need an interpreter when you speak in tongues. But what does it say? It says... For you to keep silent to yourself and to God, just like it does in the beginning of the chapter when it tells you how you speak in your unknown tongue that is separate from these gifts that come from the tongues. Tongues is the initial gift that you get from the Holy Ghost. If you go to Mark chapter 16, verse 17, it tells you all people that believe 
shall speak in tongues. So this is where we get the understanding. There's no person that really believes that does not speak in tongues. Now, we could go into, you know, the, the emotional arguments like, well, uh, you know, I haven't spoken in tongues. You know, is this person going to be saved if they haven't spoken in tongues? But I'm just going off the Bible. If you don't bring me the scripture and the verses to back up what you're saying, then this is what I have to go to. But anyways, um, that was just a little brief introduction to the apostolic view, the Pentecostal view of the holiness view of speaking in tongues. And this is your guy, Ashley Keaton, just Ashley Keaton. Um, have a blessed day.